Number one tells us that Priya creates a scatter plot showing the relationship between the number of steps she takes and her heart rate. The correlation coefficient of the line of best fit is 0.88. Are they correlated? Explain your reasoning. And yes, um, because 0.88 is close to one. And if our correlation coefficient is close to one or negative one, then the data is correlated. B, do either of the variables cause the other to change? Um, and this one probably depends. I mean, they could, but it probably depends more on not the number of steps she's taking, but why she's taking the steps. And that's because, um, you know, if she's running, if she's walking uphill, like walking, like hiking, or doing something that is more exercise related, then this is going to cause the increase in heart rate or this is gonna cause her heart to heart rate to increase. But if she's, you know, walking slowly, or just like strolling along, then her heart rate, you know, she's gonna get more steps, but her heart rate isn't gonna increase. So it's more likely that it's dependent on the type of exercise that she's doing. Number two, Kieran creates a scatter plot showing the relationship between the number of students attending drama club and the number of students attending poetry club each week. The correlation coefficient for the line of best fit is negative 0.36. So are they correlated? explain your reasoning. Um, I would say no, because negative 0 0.36 is not close to negative one in this point, in this case, because we have a negative correlation coefficient here and 0.36 is not very close to one. So I would say no, because negative 0.36 is not close to negative one. And then do either of the variables cause the other to change? So if the number of students attending drama club increases, does that change the number of students attending poetry club? Uh, and this is probably no. They There's no evidence that they're correlated um, or that they're caused by one another. So there is no evidence of causality, meaning one causes the other. So anything anything to do with this correlation would likely be, you know, from, from something else, just that they happen to be going, that there's nothing else going on. So if one increases, the other does. Or if they decrease, maybe there was some other event at school that was more exciting that people decided to go to or whatever. Um, but these two don't seem to have any evidence that they cause the other one to go up or down. Number three, a news website shows a scatter plot with a negative relationship between the amount of sugar eaten and happiness levels. A headline reads, eating sugars causes happiness to decrease. What's wrong with this claim? And it's this word causes. So scatter plots um, don't prove causality. They don't prove that one causes the other. So scatter plots are not enough evidence to show causality. Just that they happen to be correlated for, for some reason, not that they're causing each other to happen, but that there's some type of correlation somewhere. So a better headline might be um, 
to say something like eating sugar may um, be correlated to, de um, to a decrease in happiness levels. but the cause is unknown. So there's some type of correlation based on this scatter plot that shows that the more sugar you eat, the less happy you are, but the cause for it is unknown. So we're not sure why that's happening. Um, and it doesn't suggest that sugar is the cause of that necessarily, still could be. Number four, a group of 125 college students are surveyed about their note-taking and study habits. Some results are represented in the table below. How many students prefer typing notes and studying for less than an hour? So we're trying to fill in this spot here. And this is, you know, an either or. Do they study for less than an hour or do they study for one or more hours? And then, you know, there's only one or the other option. So these have to total 125. And then they just looked at each of the um, ways that they take notes. So writing them by hand or typing them or they don't take them. And so if we total up all these other ones, so if we just add these all together, those equal 99. So then we would just need to do 125 minus 99 to find out that there are 26 more students that need to be represented. So they must be the ones that prefer typing their notes and studying for less than an hour. Number five, the number of miles driven and the number of gallons of gas remaining in a tank have a strong negative relationship. Explain what it means to have a strong negative relationship in this context. So this is going to mean, so strong is that they are very connected, right? They're very connected to each other. Um, and like a line of best fit would um, very nicely be able to predict this. Um, because all of these points, the scatter plot is going to look like a line or it's going to be linear. So it's going to be pretty linear. And then the negative here, so negative relationship in this context means as the number of um, miles goes up, as you drive more miles, so let's put as we drive more, the gas remaining decreases, right? So as we drive more miles or as the miles increase, right? So as the miles increase, the gas remaining decreases. Number six, you're going to need a graphing calculator or a website to create a line of best fit for this data. So if you are using a graphing calculator, you are going to go to stat and then you're going to edit your list and then type this data in. The X is in list one, the Y is in list two. I've already done it. Um, but when you do it, make sure that you check that they are actually accurate and you didn't mistype anything. Then to get the line of best fit, you go back into the stat menu. You go over to calculate and you select option number four, the linear regression. 
Then you click enter until it calculates it for you and you get this information. And then you can write your line of best fit using this information. And this one is again, not telling us what, how many decimal places it wants us to use. So I'm just gonna use two decimal places. So then we would do Y equals, and we put this A value in front of the X. So negative 8.55 X, and then the B value. So then plus the B value of um, 118.39. So that's our equation for our line of best fit. And then B asks us what is the correlation coefficient and your correlation coefficient is your R value. And so in this case, it is negative um, 0 0.86.